Welcome back to Cape Breton Movers and Shakers, where we have conversations with people who are making things happen here in Cape Breton Island. I'm Richard Lorway, president of GoCapeBreton.com, and uh, with me is Jonathan Buffett, founder and uh, manager of Cape Breton Mesonet. Welcome, Jonathan. Hi, thanks for having me. Great, great you can be here. So for those who don't know, let's just start with the basics. What is Cape Breton Mesonet? Uh, it's a network of uh, weather stations across Cape Breton Island, um, and uh, it, uh, it's a very uh, dense network of stations, which is where the name Meso comes from in the term Mesonet. So Mesonet is kind of a scale thing? Yeah, it's the Meso scale, uh, which is about 10 kilometers apart, roughly. Okay. Um, yeah. So, okay. Uh, yeah. And how many weather stations is that on the island currently? Uh, as of now, there's 89 on the island, I believe. So holy Mackinac! All right. Yeah, <laughs> you've been busy. Quite, quite a few. Yes, so, yeah, and uh, and me and several others in the community as well. So uh, it's been uh, quite a quite a thing that that you know all of us have accomplished. It's been pretty good. Excellent. So 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 when you started, that you were basically by yourself. Is that my understanding? Yeah, I mean, it was years ago. I was a teenager, and I, I started with one station. But um, I, I'd say more within the last maybe seven, eight years or so is when it became, um, you know, several stations across the island and instead of just one in the backyard. And from there, <clears throat> I reached out to other people. Um, actually, one of the first uh, people that I, I met in doing this was Bill Danielson, oddly enough. And, um, and then through him, I, I got to meet quite a few other people on the island. And uh, so in the last five years or so, it's really, it's really taken off. And we've had a lot of interest in, you know, from the community and, and uh, from many, many different people. Um, and uh, now the island is covered with almost 90 stations. <laughs> wow. So. so have you always been interested in the weather? Yes, yeah, ever since I was a kid. And you, and you, you're currently, you work for Environment Camp, do you? Are we allowed to say that? Yeah, I do. Yeah, I work for them. Um, so the, the Mesonet is is uh, separate from them, but uh, but yet very similar in the type of work that I do with both my my day job and my hobby, so to speak. Gotcha, gotcha. Yeah. Okay. Um, and, and so a bit of your personal history, like where are you from? And um, where you got started, you said in your backyard, where was that, for example? Uh, that was in Port Hawkesbury. Okay. Yeah. So um, the station is still there at my dad's house in Port Hawkesbury, and um, um, so uh, I was I was born in Cape Breton, and uh, I grew up in um, in in Dartmouth for a number of years, and in Port Hawkesbury, and also uh, I live in Sydney Mines part time as well. So I've been here and there and everywhere, but uh, much of that time in Cape Breton. Right. So, so uh, what kinds of information do the weather stations gather? Uh, so they gather uh, temperature, humidity, uh, wind, pressure, um, rainfall. Uh, some of them do water temperature uh, and uh, solar radiation, which is the intensity of the sun. Um, and uh, yeah, so they, they cover all the, the basic uh, weather elements that um, the vast majority of people are interested in monitoring. Right, so, so it, it, the, these stations all feed this data in, in real time to the website, is that correct? Yeah, yeah, so um, to the website, um, uh, minutely data is updated uh, for some of the cellular stations, which are in remote areas, it's every five minutes, but, um, but yeah, so every minute you can see the live data on there and uh, also historical data as well. Uh, and I'm in the process of, of Trying to build a more modernized archive system, um, but uh, but as of now, the, the the front end of the website is uh, is uh, it's pretty well where I want it to be. So, um, but yeah, there's there's been some work going on kind of behind the scenes with the website as well to make improvements, and uh, I've been beta testing a few things. So um, there will be some improvements coming to the uh, the interactive map in another couple of weeks. Right, so so you store all the data long term, and at this point, it's been several years worth of that. Yeah, um, some of them have over ten years. Uh, many of them are probably 
within the last five to six years. Um, but yeah, some of them have 10 or even 15 years or more of data. Mm -hmm. so, so how how do you see this this being used as data? What what, does, what can people, what benefit, I guess? What... Well, uh, there's, there's different, um, there's the real time, uh, uh, you know, advantage of, I don't know, if someone wants to go, uh, go out on the Bredore Lake with their boat or, or just wants to go to the beach, they want to check the water temperature in Benyon um, or Bedeck or Iona um, or, you know, any day-to-day -day activities for, for you know, um, most people. Um, and then the other aspect of it is weather forecasters, um, they, can, they can look at the data, especially, you know, if we get big storms, like the windstorms in Shetty Camp, uh, they always keep a close eye on them for those. And, um, and then in the longer range, um, when enough of the data is collected at all these different locations, you can actually see trends and averages and, and uh, any potential changes, um, specifically, you know, temperature and wind. And um, precipitation is a little harder to, uh, to gather trends from, but uh, um, but temperature certainly, which is something that seems to be of interest lately. <laughs> so, yes. Yes. you know, so there's, there's many, yeah, there's many and, and probably more perhaps agriculture, tourism related interests. There's um, many possibilities. And uh, I think the island has a lot to offer as well. Um, that, uh, you know, untapped potential, so to speak, that uh, maybe some of this data could help to uncover. Um, so, especially with agriculture. Gotcha. So, so the island does have a lot of, I'll say distinct microclimates, and this is just me as a lay person, my understanding. <laughs> <laughs> You're correct. But, and and um, do you find that this is sort of driving an increasing awareness of that? Very much, yeah. And in fact, it's this very, um, th these micro climates that you speak of and how pronounced they are in Cape Breton that really uh, was the, the passion behind everything for myself really and just my burning curiosity to see you know just what's happening in each corner of the island and even um, the eastern mainland which is you know very much tied into the weather of Cape Breton because it's upstream so um, I have put stations in Guysboro and Anaganish County for that reason. So that gives us a bit better of an idea of what's coming into Cape Breton and just um, what's happening around it. Right. Okay. Okay. And earlier you referenced the community support. So, you know, I, I'm, I'm on the email list and I, and I get, you know, frankly, really fascinating emails about, for instance, you know, currently the, the, uh, the smoke from the wildfires in Alberta and BC reaching the island and yeah. And you know, dust from the Sahara Desert in Africa, of which I was completely unaware prior to that. Yeah. Prior to this, <laughs> <laughs> um, but it, again, it makes sense when you consider that you know the the world is all connected in many ways. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah. do you? And I guess when I think about the the Mesonet and and there's some other activities that are happening around the Bador, I'm, I'm seeing a um, you know a, a phenomenon. I guess we'll, we'll call citizen science. Where people are playing more active roles in 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 science and doing actual field work, and and yeah. so can you talk a bit about that and how that relates to what you do? Yeah, so um, <clears throat> we're able to engage with citizens that live on the island, and um, um, you know, part of it is, is you know anecdotally hearing about what the climate is like in their area, um, putting a station in there, and then actually seeing that oh yeah, like you know. Uh, this whatever type of wind that might happen there, or maybe they're in a frost hollow, that it's actually very much true. And, um, and then you, you also get, you know, you gather more engagement from these people that spreads into the community and um, discussions can arise that are, you know, really quite interesting that otherwise wouldn't be there, you know, as we see on the email list. And um, all kinds of people that come out of the woodwork with all kinds of interesting pictures and stories and data and information and, and uh, so that that's one of my favorite parts about it yeah i remember discussion last winter about how some of the snow in middle river was turning pink 
Yes. And then it came about that it was dust blowing from Prince Edward Island, the, the, the red clay. Yep. Yeah. So that was in February 2019, I think. We had kind of a rare combination of a, a very cold and wind, windy winter, and there was no snow on the ground, <laughs> or very little. And, and yeah, so there was dust just up in the air, right across to Cape Breton and, and beyond. Yeah. Yeah. Very, very interesting. And, uh, yeah. Yeah, and of course uh, the, the the satellite pictures that are often shared showing the the ice conditions yeah. and yeah, they were those are great great visuals. Visuals are a big part of 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 this as well. Um, so satellite images, um, uh, you know, spatially being able to view data information, um, the the ground, you know, uh, from from the satellite above the ice, all that stuff is very a person can gather so much information just from one visual rather than if they had to read you know uh this the same description in a text type format right exactly so exactly. yeah yeah so that's where uh, a lot of that also helps with with these discussions and 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 uh i think even educating people about the climate around them you know on cape breton and in, in the larger scale in general so looking to the future, where do you see, I mean, so you've got 89 stations now. Do you have, a, do you have an end goal in sight? Or how do you think it could be, could the, the, the network could change in future? Uh, I think the general configuration of the network will stay the same. Um, we have a lot of, I, I mean, much of the network is, is local citizens who've invested in a station themselves to have on their property and and is shared into uh, the network that are, so that everyone can benefit from the data. Um, so that that part I, I, I don't see changing. Um, but I think that the big thing moving forward is that as time goes on, this data will become more and more and more valuable because we'll have years and years to compare to, uh, especially you know where, where they're set up properly, they're collecting accurate data, and they're not being moved around uh, or anything like that. And so, um, in the future, we you know we could see what what kind of trends there are around the island. If they're changing, if they're not changing, uh, and if they are changing, what's happening or what's not happening. Um, and uh, and also, like like I mentioned before, perhaps um, it could attract some some interest to the island, uh, maybe vineyards or some kind of agriculture like that. Like you know, at one time Cape Breton had a lot of farming uh, yes. uh, and, and the, so the soil is very good in Cape Breton. A lot, a lot of people might be surprised to know that, that there's actually very, I mean, in, in relative to Nova Scotia, that it is um, fairly good soil. So I could see that as being um, a potential, um, I guess, benefit that could happen in the future. Um, but, yes, well, the prevailing yeah. wisdom many years ago was that grapes didn't really grow in Nova Scotia. And they then, do now. <laughs> and then along came, you know, Hans Christian Yost, and, and that kind of changed. But yeah, uh, yeah. Um, so you you um, you mentioned that, that people can get weather stations and feed into the network. How how does someone get involved if they if they want to participate? Yeah, so if they want to, um, they can uh, send me an email, which is on the the website. Um, if you go to the left, the left side of the website, there's an expandable drop-down menu, and uh, the uh, the email is there. And so um, uh, they can contact me uh, if they're interested in investing in a station on their property. Um, I and so what I do is I I get everything together um, and I set it up for them, and gotcha. <clears throat> then it becomes part of of the uh, the network. Um, they own the station; it's on their property, but it's um, and, but I, you know, I, I set it up for them and I help to maintain it um, the best I can. And, uh, and m many of them are quite helpful in, in, um, you know, helping to maintain them as well. Like if, if a rain gauge is clogged with leaves and just needs to be cleaned out or, uh, a battery needs to be changed, little things like that. So gotcha. that's a big help. Yep. So you've done a lot of this on your own dime so far. Is that ac accurate? Yeah. Yeah, most definitely. 
yeah. and and uh, so I so <laughs> it's mentioned that it's a cooperative. So if somebody wants to support you, there's ways to do that to support this initiative. Is there? And that's on the website. Yeah, you can uh, uh, donate. Um, I, there's a Patreon link there as well. Um, at some point in the future, I will have to, um, or I, I'm planning to make it an official, you know, some kind of official entity. Um, so something along the lines of a nonprofit or something like that. And that gotcha. will, yeah. um, so that's, 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 that's kind of the next step now. Um, and that, that may open up opportunities to help maintain what we've created both financially and possibly also, um, you know, needing, needing help and repairing things because as of now it's just me and it does keep me quite busy. Oh yeah. It's not <laughs> so, your day uh, job. <laughs> you can get it in. No, no. <laughs> I, I love it, but uh, but yeah, the, the more stations there are, the more um, that there is to to fix. And not that they, not that these stations break very often. Uh, usually, it's just routine little things that happen, you know, with wear and tear of anything outside in the in the elements. So, um, yeah. So yeah, moving forward, I, I I suppose you could say that's one of the things I I see changing a bit um, or evolving is is uh, is that uh, just in order to um, yeah sustain what we have which which so far has you know been a really good thing excellent excellent okay well do you have anything you want to add at this point I think we're I think I have most of the information I I was looking for and of course I will share the website and Facebook page um, mm -hmm. in the post um, yeah I just want to thank thank everybody for their 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 interest and their support and, and many people have donated, um, you know, to, uh, to the Mesonet uh, this year, to, you know, to help with some of the maintenance costs. And, um, and, you know, I really appreciate that every, every bit of it helps. And um, yeah, so th thank you to everyone for, uh, for being involved with the Mesonet. Super. Well, it's, it's, it's a really interesting initiative and, and I'm glad I, I, uh, I'm glad I'm on the mailing list because it's it really is <laughs> entertaining. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Okay. Well, thanks, Jonathan. That okay. was Jonathan Thank Buffett, you. founder and manager of the Cape Breton Mesonet. And we'll see you next time on Cape Breton Movers and Shakers.